I believe that's, of course, some people are tired of everything that's happening in Argentina, but it was always like that. So maybe it's not such a big issue for Argentina. Well, we Argentinas uh, know how to live in this situation. Uh, there's, in fact, I believe what I like to say is that it's Argentina, the, the, the government doesn't do anything. It's going to fix itself because there's a lot of money in Argentina. There are lots of people with money in Argentina to invest and everything, but no one in Argentina like, wants to invest uh, there because you have a lot of insecurities and, and things and the government and everything. So, But there's enough people interested in Argentina to invest there. There's a lot of market of people that know the stuff, that are with high education and other things. So the, the things are there for Argentina to, to be a country with a, with a big surplus and everything. But if the government is always blocking everything and and uh, and I believe it's the only it's the only thing that stops Argentina from being a, a more traditional country or normal country at least. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Monero.com Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero safely on iOS and Android too. Monero.com Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. And by IVPN. Resist online surveillance with IVPN, a privacy-focused, audited, and transparent VPN provider that accepts Monero directly. Monero.com wallet and IVPN are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever. By typing in MoneroTalk.crypto in your Monero.com or Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Franco Amati, founder of Bitcoin Argentina, the biggest Bitcoin conference in Latin America, La BitConf, and early organizer of the Libertarian Party in Argentina. The two discuss how Franco got interested in cryptography and became an early adopter of cryptocurrencies, his involvement in Argentinian politics, the current trends in government regulations and their implication for mass adoption across the world, the case against Bitcoin maximalism, the importance of community-driven crypto projects, why Argentina is the perfect breeding ground for organic crypto adoption, how La BitConf became one of the biggest crypto conferences, and much more. Monero Talk starts now. All right, Franco, what's going on, man? Hello, Douglas. Thanks for the invitation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for doing this. I I'll be honest, uh, you're not somebody I, I knew about. Uh, somebody who's been helping us out with the show recommended I, I bring you on, and you know, I did some googling. I was like, ah, in interesting guy. You're 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 one of the 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 guys behind the lot Bitcoin. Blah. How, how do you pronounce it? La Bitcoin. Uh, the the Bitcoin. La Bitcoin. Uh, Latin American Bitcoin Conference. Yes. Yeah, so yes. I, I, I was I was there in, in the beginnings in 2013 of, of the conference. I, I, I'm still active in the conference. I'm not the main guy now. We have a lot of a very big team, a production team doing the conference. I you were, you were the one of the, like the, uh, the originators behind it, correct? Exactly, yes. And this time I'm mostly the treasury and, and some little stuff doing for the conference but not full time or, or, or be active in the in the production. But, but yes, I was there. I'm not much in the Monero community, uh, to tell you the truth. Uh, this is his Monero talk. Uh, I'm a Monero holder, user, uh, and okay. it's one of the little projects that I, one of the projects that I follow some, something, but not, not totally active in the, in the news or, or everything on in the technology point of view, of, right? But I, I, so it was always a project that I liked because well, we are going to talk about that, I believe. But there are many things that Monero has that are are interesting for me. Yeah, you're 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 super you're super OG Bitcoiner. You know, you've been in this in in this from the beginning, and uh, you seem like the guy who's like, you know, really in it for the right reasons. And you're just trying to you know grow adoption. You want to actually see people using crypto. So that's why I wanted to have you on because I mean I'm looking for I like to talk to people that you know 
actually know their shit. <laughs> so whether whether you're you're a Bitcoiner or Monero, but it sounds like you did find your way to Monero. You use Monero, so that's that's encouraging to hear right there. <laughs> um, well, yeah. So what is your what is your crypto story, then, man? I mean, you, you seem like uh, you know you've been around for for a while, from from what I hear. Uh, yes, I, I I was into cryptography before. And before crypto, before cryptography, before crypto was uh, no when crypto was another thing. Okay, no, not not cryptocurrencies, but crypto using. I was a PGP user, and, and I was interested in privacy things and uses about the cryptography that was more or less for for protecting our privacy. And I I I'm and I was also libertarian. Uh, so when in 2011 I, I noticed Bitcoin, uh, it was like a perfect match for me, also because uh, it was useful for for something about my for my libertarian point of view of, uh, of the war. It was compatible with that, and I also was in, into cryptography, not not in the math and everything, but in the uses of cryptography. Mm. So it was a technological and ideological thing that match. And and I got there into Bitcoin and started using and promoting in Argentina and things. Uh, then later came Monero, uh, but in those early days uh, there was nothing more than Bitcoin and maybe Litecoin maybe later. But well, that's more or less the, the story. I was interested because of of those point of view, and it was a perfect fit. And I'm I was lucky before I believe because maybe if I had the ideological point point of view but not the technology one or the cryptography one maybe I wouldn't understand how it works and I would say mm, no this is like a pound fee or, or this is a, a fake something like that and if I had the technology like many people but I didn't have the ideological point of view maybe I I wouldn't uh, consider privacy such in a high value that that. Than my, like myself, so I I wasn't we there, so I'm happy that well my hobbies was 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 those and you're, here I am. You're a lucky bastard. Per- perfect combination. You had the per- the perfect combo going. Libertarian, also uh, into into cryptography, right? So that was that was kind of yeah. those are the people that were discovering. Bitcoin, obviously, in the in the early days. Yes, I believe so. In fact, in those early days, I was in a Libertarian Party in Argentina. It was yeah. a, very, a very, very small party. It no longer exists. I was it, one of the helped, founders. Yeah, you, you helped start that as well, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was, the, I believe, officially, I don't know, but I believe it was the first uh, political party to, to accept Bitcoin. We started accepting Bitcoin in donations in 2012. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. And and in fact, we had really donations in those years. Right? We have we were we were a group very technological, so we have some people that was donating to the party in Bitcoin. We had a, a, a one one of the guys was living in Sing, in Singapore, and he wanted uh, all months was donating in Bitcoin to the to the party. Did the party? Uh, 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 no, the party said I was I was the the owner of the wallet. Uh, and I was selling each time that the funds arrive, I sell it and, and I bought them for myself. <laughs> <laughs> but it was totally all, all we agree. I was I needed to sell or buy for the party because someone needs to manage that strange thing that was Bitcoin in those days. Uh, and I was doing that work. I, I was I was also the, no well one year late in 2013. I started working as a uh, exchanger, informal exchange of Bitcoin in Argentina. We, we didn't have uh, exchanges like Coinbase and, and that stuff. So I was one of the early that was selling and buying for the, for the community. When someone needs to buy Bitcoin and there's no exchanges, there were people working for, on that. Like a local local Bitcoin kind of. Exactly, local Bitcoin. So so wait, just so, so when you started the party, that was before you discovered Bitcoin? Or that was um, after? Yes, it it was in 2009, um, so it was uh, uh, before, yeah. In 2011, I, I noticed Bitcoin. Very cool, very cool. So I imagine that that whole class of libertarians that you were with are probably Bitcoiners to this day, right? Exactly. All, I, we are still friends with all, all the guys and, and guys there. Uh, and yes, we more than... A lot of them are, are Bitcoiners and still use, use Bitcoin uh, and everything. 
So um, it was a very strange combination of people, I believe. It was, it was uh, a fun project, maybe, the, the party. Uh, and we were, we were having fun with that. Uh, in fact, we had to close it or because uh, we didn't have the time to, to continue the project. But we, we had an election and we were there in Buenos Aires, in Argentina. We had like 7,000 votes, <laughs> something like that. And, and then after that, when we got into another things, in my case, more active in Bitcoin. Uh, and, and some of the, of the guys of the party also, we had some projects in crypto and everything. And this, this guy that's running uh, for president right now, He's run the uh, what's his name? Uh, Javier Millet, or how do you pronounce it? Javier Millet, yeah. Javier Millet. So he's running as a libertarian, right? And supposedly he has some he has some traction. He actually has a, a, a chance at perhaps winning in 2023. Uh, I'm not really sure. I believe no, okay. but but he, he, he's, but he's, he's, one, but he's, okay. he's, he's very noticed, uh, and maybe it will be the second or, or the third, but not not much like that. So it's it's very important in in, in Argentina in these days. It's crazy to to have a libertarian uh, there. Yeah, yeah. So did, did he come out of your your libertarian uh, crew there that that started the party? No, in fact, in those days uh, he wasn't a libertarian. I believe he he started mainly he was an economist, mm. uh, and he started being a libertarian by by reading some other out, authors. And I believe in 2013 he started to appear in in television in 2014, something like that. Uh, when we were finishing the party, <laughs> uh, and and when it's getting getting noticed, notice, and it's, he was very invited in a lot of TV shows because he he yells a lot in TV and everything. But uh, that yeah. works because people notice you because he's doing that stuff. And and well, we will see what what happens. Uh, I see more him more more like more like economical part of libertarian part libertarian not. In the social issues, is uh, some yes, some no, okay, or less. Uh, but yes, it's uh, it's great to have someone with those views now in the in political discussion, in such high levels. So he's he's like a tr he's a true Austrian economist, right? He's that's yes, it's true, exactly. He's Austrian economist, yes. Yeah. So it's so what's his t uh, is he a, is he a big Bitcoin guy or is he more you know uh, bait, bait currency should be based on gold? Is he is he? Uh, he's open to to all to all things. Um, I, I was with him. I, I talked about uh, him and uh, other libertarians in Argentina to to notice Bitcoin. I, I try that a lot, but they don't see it such wins such an importance as me, uh, but they are open to uh, money competition, so they are open to Bitcoin and everything. They, they, they all usually talk favorably about the competition of money, so they are open to it and everything, but they are not Bitcoin promoters. No. Uh, him, for example. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know much. I was in Argentina, I don't know, I'm at, it was a long time ago now, over like over 10 years ago. Be beautiful place. Beautiful. Loved it. And uh, I really don't know much about the politics and what's going on over there. All I know is that they've always had super high inflation. I never under really understood why. I just like it just, and it's like a problem that never went away. So I mean, I would think this guy would actually have a decent chance because I imagine he's out there proposing like drastic, you know, measures for fixing the inflation problem in Argentina. And I imagine the other candidates aren't saying things as drastic, right? Like, and I would think the people at this point would be so fed up where they'd be like, well, we might as well try this. Everything, like, it can't possibly get any worse. We might as well try something new. No, is it uh, political? Yeah, I, I, be, I believe some part of the people that's going to vote for him, yes, agree with that view. And some other part is like the, his personality. Uh, and some people like his personality and going to vote for him for that. So it's a mix. I believe that, of course, some people are tired of, the, of everything that's happening in Argentina. But it was always like that. So maybe it's not such a big issue for Argentinians. Well, we Argentinians uh, know how to live in this situation. Uh, there's, in fact, I believe what I like to say is that it's Argentina, the, the, the government doesn't do anything. It's going to fix itself because there's a lot of money in Argentina. There are lots of people with money in Argentina to invest and everything. But... No one in Argentina like wants to invest uh, there because you have a lot of insecurities and, and things and the government and everything. So, 
but there's enough people interested in Argentina to invest there. There's a lot of market of people that know the stuff that are with high education and other things. So the, the things are there for Argentina to, to be a country with a, with a big surplus and everything. But if the government is always blocking everything and, and, uh, and I believe it's the only, it's the only thing that stops Argentina for being a, a more traditional country or normal country, at least. Yeah. So what you're, what you, what you're telling me actually scares me, right? Because I mean, you're basically saying uh, people in Argentina, to a degree. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're kind of saying like they, they've they've become accustomed to the circumstances they live in, and, and they've adjusted otherwise and figured out how to how to live in these in this high inflation this environment. Situation. But that's scary, right? Because that means eventually that could happen everywhere, and the people just don't revolt. It, people just end up adjusting. That's a kind yes, of terrifying exactly. thought. So yes. I mean, why aren't people up in arms? Like, why aren't people on the streets? Why aren't people taking over the government? Not all people understand that maybe you take the government, okay, but comes another government that is more or less the same. More of the political class is it's a disaster in Argentina without some exceptions like Millet. But um, everything is totally statist. Uh, so it happened uh, many times that people revolt, but the, the one that came later was worse. Uh, in fact, in 2001, I believe that happened. You know, there, we, we had a guy that was not good <laughs> from my point of view, and people revolt. Myself, it's uh, revolt also. Um, and then what it came was worse. So when you revolt, you have to be ready that what can come later uh, when you revolt, because in Argentina it can happen that it makes things worse. It's yeah. sad, uh, and it does. That also changed my view of the war, uh, of where we go in and everything. Because I'm, I'm not, I'm an optimist guy, yeah. but not about the government. Uh, governments, uh, I see the society will manage like the Argentinian people does. But I'm very open to people that, okay, we have to do things for ourselves, go outside of the grid of the government and, and try to... I, I always promote, promote that with the things that will work for, for people is passports and uh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin and passport, I say. So things you can travel the world and you can have options in the world where to live. And Bitcoin because, well, uh, as an option where no confiscation and no no way of blocking your phones and everything. Uh, like, like, in fact, in Argentina, there's on these days, we have a lot of emigration. Most people are going out of the country. Uh, what I, I, was, I was one of those. I, I live in Lisbon now, so I'm not in Argentina. Um, and a lot of people are doing the, the, the same. They go to Argentina to, to visit the family and everything, and then they're living abroad. But they still talking about Argentina, posting in Twitter about Argentina. You see my Twitter account, my Twitter account, and you, you see sometimes things, a lot of things in Argentina uh, and everything. You, you can't go out. Or sorry, you go out physically and your finances is out of there and the government doesn't affect you, but you are in the news always and talking about with friends about Argentina and everything. It's a little bit sad. But I don't see the war uh, getting better in that point of view. I, I believe the... The governments, it's, 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 it's difficult to, to, to view that. What I believe that with the same that happened to Argentina is going to start happening in more parts of the world, maybe slowly, and I believe we are seeing that. But the incentives for the political class are, are not there. Uh, so I, I'm not an optimistic in that view of the governments getting better. Yeah, the, the the system the system is broken. It doesn't work, and uh, U.S. isn't isn't that isn't that different to the degree where you where you can see it, you know, not working here. If if, if it's if it's going to head in that direction, there it will likely head in that direction here, um, given where we're currently at. I mean, it, it looks it looks like that's that's where we're headed. So, I mean. You're not an optimist with with government. I, I don't think I don't think I am either. I don't think anybody that really listens to this show is, you know. 
And it's, I think most people, especially those that are into Monero, are like, well, we just got to do like, and like you were saying, do our own thing, build our own, you know, uh, circular economy. That's why Monero is always like, you know, use Monero, use Monero, trying to get people to use it. Um, but so, do you are you an optimist in terms of the technology that we could that we can succeed in that way? Like, yes, of course. Okay. Uh, yes, yes, I believe uh, there are tools to to manage and live in this world without being affected by governments and everything. And I believe Bitcoin, Monero are options for that. Uh, in fact, in Argentina, there's people using it. For example, I, I will say some examples of Argentinian economy to understand what how crazy is everything. Uh, if you are working, living in Argentina and, and you are working for, them, for a company or for a company or for someone, something and rec or receiving money from abroad, from outside of Argentina, if you receive the money with traditional means or bank accounts, something like that, the government will, will confiscate the half of it and uh, using a fake exchange rate, okay? If, if someone is paying you dollars, for example, from abroad, uh, the, the government won't allow you, the government don't, 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 the banks, in fact, but because of the government orders them, you can receive the dollars. You will receive pesos, Argentinian pesos, at the exchange rate of the, what the government says is the dollar peso conversion, okay? So using that thing, they, they confiscate half of your money because they, they don't use the, the, mar the market rate, but the fixed rate but set by the government. So we re when we receive money from abroad, you are going to receive not dollars, pesos, and you, you will receive half of it because it's not a real exchange rate. So you have a lot of the incentives to use crypto and to receive the money in crypto because when you receive the crypto, the government doesn't know it, nothing that can do nothing. And, and when you sell a crypto for pesos, for example, Argentina, they're going to use the real exchange rate, okay? The Bitcoin exchange rate or Monero exchange rate from two pesos is real because it's market driven, okay? So there are lots of incentives to receive money using that. And when you send money to abroad, uh, the government doesn't allow you to do that. <laughs> exactly like that. You have to have an, a, a company and get an authorization to, to wire the money outside. And it doesn't give you that for cases for an individual, something like that. So you 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 are also have an incentive to use crypto to send the money abroad. Right. So it's, a lot. it's the perfect native use case for, for crypto. It's like you exactly. Know, yeah. It's one of those, and you have many. For example, in uh, 20 years ago, we have a bank confiscation. So people that had money in the banks were confiscating the money, and we they couldn't recharge to, to from the ATM or use the money there. So that's another thing is money that money government that can't confiscate. That's a, another use case. And another use case, of course, is inflation. So, okay, Monero, Bitcoin, they have a lot of volatility. So that some people can see that, but in the long run, they, they are better than the peso Argentina, of course. So basically what i'm hearing you say so the, the, what you see is the value proposition of bitcoin is is being censorship resistant unconfiscatable and yes. and anything else and and what's and other pillars i know you said inflation uh, and uh, and inflation yes resistant to inflation resistant or something like that i don't know how to call it i believe that well a monero more or less the same of course of yeah, course. That, in, in, some, yeah. in some of those better that Bitcoin, yeah. of course, and in some of those, in one of those, I believe we can debate this. But well, you have a, 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 a fixed inflation in the long term, but it's very few, so it's very low, so it doesn't shouldn't be a problem, also. So, so Monero too. Yeah, I mean they they really compete for for the same. Uh, they're they're really both competing to to do the that thing the best right i think is being unconfiscatable uh, uh value transfer system uh or whatever uh un uncensorable right uh, yeah. so do you do you because we, we talk about the show all the time but yeah might as well get your your then your your full overview of kind of monero versus bitcoin do you think Monero are arguably more censorship resistant and unconfiscatable because of its privacy. Yes, uh, 
In fact, I, I, I love Monero. I like Monero. In some topics, I like Monero more than Bitcoin, of course. Uh, sometimes I see Bitcoin that maybe it helps. Be, I'm not really sure about what I'm going to say, but uh, sometimes I see Bitcoin that not be so private. It helps in because uh, there are a lot, there's a lot of, for example, exchanges in, in Monero that used to be exchanges in Monero and no longer are supporting Monero, for example, cases like those. And it's going to be, I believe, the governments will try to persecute or, or stop Monero in some way. Um, and that doesn't help because the economy needs to be mixed. Or that the, we can go to a totally crypto economy, I believe. In fact, I, I'm more than a libertarian. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an agorist, and agorists like to see the contra economy and, and contra economy. And, and, but in the real world, the, the economy has to mix the traditional and the crypto. And in, for Monero, it's going to be a more difficult ability to do that. You, you still, you have, still have exchanges, of course. You have Kraken and some that, that support Monero, but I, I believe that's going someday maybe to, that could stop. Uh, and you see that happen already. So I believe that doesn't help Monero in the, in the, in the use case, but uh, for when people have real needs of privacy, I believe Monero is perfect and I, and I promote Monero in those cases when you have a real need, okay? Uh, so you're saying, you were saying the liquidity though, or, or just the, the on-ramps and off-ramps to Monero. Yeah, I it's believe that. Yeah, I, I don't see we, that has going to work uh, if it's, we get more popular. Mm -hmm. Because they are going to traditional exchanges are not going to support Monero, I believe. So oh, okay, we can do pitch. And exchanges yeah. will no longer be able to support it. You're saying? Yes, I believe so. It, it already happened. There were some exchanges that supported Monero and, not, and stopped supporting it. Uh, now, don't don't you think like other technologies will just kind of you know be invented that will make you know, make it super simple to just transfer between one crypto and the other. I mean, they already exist. Uh, they haven't been perfected yet, right? But we have like atomic swaps. We have decentralized exchanges. I mean, do you think those things will uh, solve that problem? The, yeah, you can now you can now use some kind of that stuff. But when you you need to some in some moment you need to transform or convert from for, to Monero to fiat or traditional fiat. And and you you see him okay you can do that that kind of stuff but not in the global the, yeah, does that, does that make it a English. better a better fiat killer right because it forces you to ultimately stay in Monero like you could you could get from crypto into Monero but then really you're gonna have to stay stay in Monero so it like forces you to kind of build that that circular economy among people that are actually willing to accept and use. Monero. Yes, but you have to be popular to get there. So I don't, it's like a chicken and egg problem, I believe, there. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree. It's interesting. Yeah. Interesting it's, dynamic. It's, it's, it's difficult. So ultimately, how do you see the two playing against each other, Bitcoin and Monero, in the future? Could you, did you see there being some symbiosis there among the two? Uh, I, there was always some symbiosis, I believe, in the community. You see, even if you see some Bitcoin maximalists, they're some of them are friendly to, to Monero. And in the Bitcoin community, there's always a lot of respect for Monero, for being a um, community driven, no per mine, fake lunch. They have some qualities Monero has that most uh, cryptocurrencies doesn't. So, uh, they're, they're in line with Bitcoin. For example, the fake lunch thing is one of the main of, the, of those. Yeah, we do no per mine. And, and always the, the, the theme of Monero of not having, for example, years ago when Blue Pony was there and everything, he was doing this, this crazy stuff or was going to announce something and oh, it was yeah. always a fake thing. But was, that was good, and in fact. Was, 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 Monero was not going to be like one of those that says, okay, we're, now we have a partnership with that company. Yeah, and that's he, going he, to he spooked all the speculators. It was exactly. Yeah, I, I loved that. <laughs> uh, so, so I believe there goes a lot of, 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 of things. One, and the community of Monero is, is wonderful, I believe. In fact, I, I, I like the community, the Monero community more than the Bitcoin One. The Bitcoin One has 
there's a lot of things that I like, but there are some things uh, I don't. Uh, some maximalist stuff there that I don't really like uh, because I, I especially like Bitcoin because of all cryptocurrencies are mostly shed, I believe, um, with permining deals and everything and managed by the people that create them. And in Monero, you don't have that. So I believe there are some stuff. Okay, you have also that stuff of main fair lines and everything in things like light, that, like light, Litecoin, for example. But Monero has something different. Litecoin has nothing. It's like doing forking Bitcoin for nothing. Uh, in Monero, you have things. You have a private privacy that's better than Bitcoin. You have some stuff there. You have a security that is fairly different in the future from Bitcoin. We will see how that goes of, of, of the inflation thing, the trailing for inflation that has Monero, that some people can see that as good and some as bad. In fact, in those early years, I, I saw that as bad. But if from the scalability point of view in the future, some people got going to consider that the, the trail inflation that has Monero for everything can be a good thing for security purposes that Bitcoin may be in some decades uh, has got something like a problem when in the fee, if the fees are not enough for the security and that Monero has already fixed it, okay? So we're going to see, but uh, I, I like Monero to be there. I, I, I'm a holder of Monero. I, I, I only use and have three cryptocurrencies as Bitcoin, Monero, and, and Ether. Uh, and in Ether, it's the very different the point I, I see from Bitcoin and Monero. I hold Ether as more as uh, an, like being an investor in a company, in a startup, something like that, in a platform, but not an, as an asset like I see Monero or Bitcoin. I consider those real assets and I consider more the Ethereum or having Ether as, as uh, investing in some startup or something like that. I, I different uh, the stuff. How about just the the kind of unstoppable nature of these things, right? So, like you, you're saying, there's a there's a chicken and egg problem there, and I, I agree, right? So, like, what what really is Bitcoin's greatest advantage is its current network effect, and essentially its liquidity. That's the same thing. They're both really the same thing, and the fact that it it seems to work in the current paradigm of of regulation right there's not a we're exactly. not a drastic change to what governments are, are typically used to dealing with yeah you you said better by words than mine i was trying to say yeah. that before it ultimately doesn't but see but that's that's where i take so it ultimately doesn't dis, disrupt governments to the greatest degree and and monero is arguably more disruptive if it were to be adopted uh, to the level that Bitcoin is adopted and, and will be adopted too. That's so, why I like to have both. It's like yeah. those, those are two attacks, different attacks, one more main, mainstream and, and that, that mix with the government better and the, right. other, the other is more agories or more libertarian agories that say okay, our own way, totally opposite of that. And we, we're going to see. But, but, but do you think, I guess the question I'm getting at, but do you think B Bitcoin takes a risk with with having what what we're saying is uh, categorizing as a benefit, could it potentially be a, a flaw at the end of the day because it allows governments to co-opt it, and then it essentially fails in that regard? I don't Where see that exists, happening totally. It continues to exist forever. Maybe even numbers somehow miraculously still going up, but it's kind of been defanged. Uh, it's just this perfectly taxable tool, surveil tool. I believe we, we can work on that. I, I'm not a white, a white flag in Bitcoin. It's already that happened. No, I believe we can fight that and we are doing that. Uh, if that having your own node and having your wallet and holding your keys and everything, you have a, that stuff a lot in the Bitcoin community. So there is fight there. There are resistance to there. It's not that all people are holding the Bitcoin in exchange and transfer between exchange and that stuff. Because if, if we are going there, okay, that's going to happen. What you're saying but i believe the that's not yet happened and we can fight and we'll i will try doing my best and, and try and try being there doing that uh, but you can say that the same thing can could happen to monero also if people use monero in exchanges or something like that 
Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing could happen. That, uh, because what can the government do for Bitcoin? Uh, do against Bitcoin? Okay, the, the, the best thing the government can, can do, the best in their view, but the, the demand is trying to have the, the money in, in, in companies, in exchange. Some people are using these custodial, custodial wallets wallets uh, and trying to manage that okay the, that's the most thing it's go, not going to change the inflation of bitcoin no it's not going to the technological part of bitcoin is it's not able to change that and they, you are, there's no way so the only thing that can happen is that okay trying to the, the, make the people to use uh, custodial wallets and, and that's kind of stuff more of that i don't see the government stopping bitcoin doing it a 50% attack on that, that that kind of stuff. We are we are already past that, I believe. In fact, those those was my early uh, things that I was afraid in Bitcoin in those early years. It was okay, maybe government will will make it illegal to have Bitcoin, something like that, uh, or we will attack it attack it with with when it was small, something like that. But I believe that long time ago more like 10 years ago or nine years ago where we passed that point where that could happen so making it totally legal or attacking it technically and uh, we hash power on everything i believe that's not going to happen so the only thing is attacking regulating it to 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 force you to use custodial wallets and and so the economy will be everything seen and regulated but we will see what happens. Uh, you see that happening in some cases. When you see a bank supporting Bitcoin, you have everything managed at crazy, crazy levels. For example, I have an account in Swiss Quote that is a bank in Switzerland that supports Bitcoin. But when you send one Bitcoin there, it's crazy that the, the amount of questions you have and it's, it's totally bullshit stuff. But uh, and you see happening there, but you still have wallets in Bitcoin. You still have an, an iPhone or, or that is totally gardened, and you have real wallets with your custodial keys and everything, uh, your own keys. Uh, maybe if, if if wallets couldn't be downloaded in those gardens like Apple Store or Google Play and something like that, but we still have that. So I believe we can we still fight. Do you see it potentially? Uh becoming compliant in terms of mining uh, and transaction validation where large miners essentially start to get controlled by governments and implement, you know, uh, start essentially well, blacklisting transactions at the, at the request of governments. Well, we started seeing that, not that request of government with, with Marathon, a miner from Bitcoin miner. Then they would stop us doing that when the community started to read to, to notice the topic and posting in Twitter, hey, Marathon, why you are not uh, processing that transaction and everything. I don't see really that's going to happen. Uh, we can see, we can go to, we have defenses for that. We can have a, a better mining protocols. Um, we already have that. We are not really using those, but we have mining protocols where the pool doesn't, can manage the transactions. We have newer versions of the Stratum protocol can manage that. So if we are forced to, to do that, I believe we can fix it. We are, we are noticing that all miners are not uh, are blocking transactions that the clients can join and some technology or some... Okay, we, we, there is always another miner and we have anonymous miners in pools, in anonymous pools that would have things to do. So I don't see that happening. And in fact, it, it's if, for example, you have two main miners or three main miners that have all the control and everything, you can still change the proof of work to something. Okay, it's, it's really hard. It's okay. It's, it's like a bomb doing that, but it's, it's possible still. You're saying if, if Bitcoin had to change its proof of work? You mean to... it, it could do in, in strange situations. It could. You mean to become like ASIC resistant, or you're saying for no, no, just another protocol. So, so miners are no longer in there working for us. So okay. miners, all, all the equipment of the miners goes go is go. Okay, you're blocking transactions. You're go. Mm. We're going to we're not work longer for you. Isn't that you? Bad. We're going to change the hash rate, and that's it. All right, wouldn't the, wouldn't the argument be that then then it's 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 kind of being centralized in terms of its 
development path like it's 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 empowering the the, the devs no, we can, no we can do that totally like we did in 2011 17 with the user activated soft fork something like that we can do that it won't we want to, it won't be a soft fork it will be hard fork but it could be community driven i don't see an issue with that do you see a scenario though where it, it where it doesn't work out where it gets captured I mean, the, the current trend seems to be towards that, right? I mean, we have these huge mining operate. They're companies now. They're publicly traded companies uh, that benefit from being in bed with the government. Like they, you know, that they they take advantage. Regulations are good. They want they want crypto regulations. They yes. want, and they're going to benefit, and they're going to be in bed with the government, and then things will just trend towards this uh you know basically ultimate outcome where they just abide by what the governments tell them to do and yes, we have those tools the, those tools is we still have miners that are not doing that we can have anonymous mining in using pools using better version of stratum protocol and in fact if that if nothing works we can well let me, let me phrase it this way. let me phrase it. is it a legitimate is it a legitimate concern or is it just fud is it like um it's not black and white uh, i believe uh, if you tell me there's i don't see that happening i don't see that there is happening in fact i believe that kind of risk is going to happen in ethereum early uh, with the well, now that they're in proof of stake uh, it's easier to see that mm. uh, if, if big stakers are companies or something like that uh, the same thing could be saying about that, and the, the community it should be a community driven thing. When in, in Ethereum, it's very difficult because you you can attack the the stalk the the one that stalk the taking the stake and everything. But we are going to see that early. I believe in Ethereum that in Bitcoin, um, and I, but I believe it's going to very work out in in Ethereum and in, in Bitcoin also. So I don't see that as a big issue. Awesome, awesome. Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. So when do we see like mass adoption of crypto bitcoin in in argentina maybe never maybe no, never yeah specifically right i feel like it's it's definitely gonna take the lead right i mean it's a, you see, a fertile ground for for true crypto adoption i would think it's gonna be one of the early adopters in terms of actual people using it it is already happening but it's not uh, again it's not something that from one day to and to the other it's it's, it's it's a process. I believe Argentina already has a lot more uh, users and by part of the uh, use, using everything, all crypto than most of Latin American countries or most of the world uh, because of this situation. So sure, you already see that happening. In Argentina. In, in Argentina, you have more than, I believe you have like 12 exchange, crypto exchange. No other country in, in Latin America or in Europe or Asia, I believe you have 12, more than 12 exchanges. Uh, totally fine working and everything you have in Argentina you have like three or four exchanges that use Lightning Network in what part of the world you have four exchanges I believe in USA you don't even you may have two cash up and, and I don't believe in, I'm, I'm not much in there but you you don't have that kind of support and people using the technology and everything in some kind when and now that I live in Europe you've seen in Europe in people it's I, I believe Europe is the part of the world that is more or less crypto, not friendly, but they're more or less friendly, but you don't see that happening. You don't see the users, you don't see the community. Uh, it's not there. It's, mm -hmm. uh, they, they use it as, as an investing thing, and that's it. Uh, You're in Portugal, right? Yeah. So are, are you? So you're seeing there's more real world usage in Argentina than Portugal. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Europe, um, Europe I believe, is for crypto is it's not there. Yeah, yeah. And but also, but to, to defend some, some of 
of Europe. I believe it is because they have a pretty good uh, bank bank staff. Okay, the, 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 you can live in Portugal without having a bank account in Portugal. For example, I live in Portugal. I don't have a bank account from Portugal. You can have a bank account from other country in Europe, and you have transfer really fast without issues. In USA, it's not like that. For example, you, you have to do a wall transfer in USA. It's more a difficult process, uh, and, and sometimes you have to go to the manage to the bank. Uh, by foot, physically, to do a white transfer. Some bank account doesn't allow white transfers easily. You have to use WISE or some other platform. Uh, and in Europe, you have a bank system, I believe, that is better than the USA. In that point of view, in the transactional level, okay? I'm not talking about the holding the money in the bank account and that kind of stuff. So in transactional level, you have better apps in Europe. So I believe Europe had, doesn't have the need for, for, for this. For, for this. Right, like yeah, that's like we're saying. Argentina is actually fertile ground. I mean, you have you have inflation real way that's that's been happening for years. You have the capital controls that you were talking about, and just yeah, the the banking system. I I guess itself, right, just is just not yeah. par. Um, so what is it like on the ground in Argentina, like in Buenos Aires? Can you walk into a restaurant and you know is it completely like common to be you know I'm going to pay in crypto? No, not really common, but you have a lot of people. For example, you have many startups crypto startup with uh, debit cards mm -hmm. and you see those a lot but really a lot if you uh, you ask for a you if you have a a, a commerce and some, uh, some something and you're selling stuff you're going to get a lot of people that when buy buy stuff for you with credit card are, are giving you a crypto card mm -hmm. they are very very popular in, in argentina the crypto cards Cool. Things I don't want to say one because I, I will not say all of them, but there are many companies doing that in Argentina. And you see those cars a lot in Argentina when buying stuff. Okay, it's not the Monero way, the Bitcoin way. I see it totally. But it's Before difficult. You... It's diff I, I was already there trying to, to, to talk with people selling stuff. Okay, support Bitcoin, accept Bitcoin. It's not really easy to do that. Uh, since 2013, I tried that with, with a street in Argentina and everything. And you managed to do it, but in some days you don't have clients or people using it. So the right, people that you know, is managing the, the, the cashier uh, forgot about crypto because you, you have a client once in many weeks and that kind of stuff. Or maybe the one that is was was into crypto and knows how to to get the money that day is not there and they, there's another guy who they are managing the cashier and doesn't support crypto it's happened so it, it's very difficult you have to have more global support i believe and more global use to be there and support crypto in a, in a way non-custodial way without without a startup without something in the middle yeah 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 you, you need you need a strong like a really strong community that yeah. you can't just like get a guy to accept Bitcoin and then nobody goes in and spends it. You know, it's you, you need you need more real users. You, you need yeah, more users. Really, you need more holders of Bitcoin or Monero and everything in your cell phone. Yeah. Some people have Monero has Bitcoin, but doesn't have them in, in the cell phone. And you need some there to to pay where you go. Uh, so it's, it's I get I get people to accept Monero all the time over here because I mean it's just at the point. Uh, and I'm sure, like in Argentina, right? Like, like if you wanted to tip, well, are, are tips cus tips are part of your bill in Argentina? Or are they uh, are tips? Yes, we have a not not as USA that in USA yeah, it's crazy yeah. about tips, but, <laughs> but we have a we have a ten percent more or less. It's not that Europe. Europe in Europe you have five percent, but we have tips. Yeah, I'm sure Argent Buenos Aires is at the point where I could essentially would be able to get anybody there to accept their tip in crypto, right? Like a lot of people, I would think. Like, hey, I'm gonna well, yes. would you rather me leave your tip in whatever pesos or you know download this wallet. I'm gonna send you. I'm gonna send you Monero. Like, is yeah. it at that point where most people would be like, sure, I know crypto. I'll try it out. Uh, if you have to download the wallet from the start and everything, oh, okay. I, I give ten minutes and I don't see that happening. Sorry, but most uh, of them have a crypto. The people already uh, have. Always remember. Yes, sorry. Go ahead. I'm just no, always remember that Argentinas, or even if they receive pesos, they know how to manage the economy in an informal way and how to convert it easily and everything. So <clears throat> sometimes they would be, they prefer, you will say, oh, but the peso is losing value all day. Yes, but it's, for the people, it's easy to, for the, the one there, it's easy to receive uh, 
de peso, de, de pesos than Bitcoin and then convert it to dollars or maybe to Bitcoin or Monero itself, but not in the in the moment there. So I, I would love that happening and I, I will can work for that. I already work for that a lot. But and now I try not, not to convince people, okay, the tools are there when you need, you will use it. And in people in Argentina, it's already happening, but not in the way you are talking, I believe, in, in the way you are paying for stamping Bitcoin uh, locally, but for sending money abroad and everything. In fact, for another example, in Argentina, you have a, a wall system, a wall informal economy to, com to convert fiat money. For example, the government doesn't allow you to buy dollars. Argentina. Uh, they will say they allow you, but that doesn't allow you more than a little, really little, and very few people is allowed to do that. Okay, so it, it's not allowing you to buy dollars. So people, what what happened before crypto? Uh, you have a lot of places where you can illegally, technically legally, you can exchange right pesos to dollars or euros and everything. Okay. And you have a lot of these offices. Each town has at least one of these offices, illegal offices, so people can convert it. For example, you receive the, the salary in pesos, but you can save a little, you can save in pesos, and that little you, you convert it to dollars before crypto, okay? Uh, and you have some dollars in, the, in, in, in bills, in physical bills, okay? Uh, and what started to, man to, have to change in 2000. 17 on 18 or less in Argentina is that those businesses that are doing the exchange informal exchange of Bitcoin the, of dollar to to peso are started supporting crypto. So now you have a lot of these places where you can you can buy crypto or sell crypto Ill illegally without per per papers and everything uh, already there because there there are business that was there for the fiat war and now added Bitcoin. So, for example, you can you, you want to send money abroad, you can send the, money, the Bitcoin to, to one of these offices and the other people can go to the office, to that offices and recharge the, the pesos or the dollars and everything. So we have a lot of money, people receiving money from abroad because they send the money using crypto, but not in the way we, you are, uh, or, or me will prefer. Mm -hmm. They send the money to to a, to a wallet from the, one of these offices, and this office then sends gives dollars physically to the people. But that's positive. We, we, oh, yeah, we, yeah, just, yeah. That's, that's... we have a lot of managing people there, and a big amounts because I'm not saying a, a, a very small amount. Sometimes, for example, people that wants to buy an apartment in another country, and you have the the, the money in Argentina, the government doesn't allow you to send the money abroad. But you want to, to move there, you want to go it out of Argentina and everything. So people buy crypto in the one of these offices. Mm. And then in the other part of the world, when they try to uh, sell the crypto and buy the, the stuff. And there you have to give some papers, depends on the country, okay? But the, but the Argentinian park can be totally informal way and you no, know, it doesn't matter. That's, that's amazing. Uh... Crypto, crypto is finding its way. It's it's working as intended. Um, and these places, there you said they're 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 legal places, or that you're seeing they're they're kind of like, like is the crypto thing? Are they regulate doing the crypto thing with like government uh, licenses, or it's just they're just like, no, no, it's illegal. But it's illegal in a way. But everyone everyone does that. Yeah, it's, it's illegal, but it's commonly accepted. Okay, these places I'm, because if not, people is is going to. The economy of Argentina is so going to crash even more because if the people doesn't convert, doesn't can can sorry, convert the pesos to another thing, uh, it's crazy. The people are going to revolt and everything. So you can still convert the pesos to crypto or convert the pesos to dollars, but in an illegal way. That's. It's crazy down there, man. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, it's really crazy. <laughs> but that's why I'm not living there. Now. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that's why you would be living there. It's it's like I said. It sounds like beautiful, fertile ground for, you know. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, in, in some way, yes. But in some other ways, it's crazy uh, for for some people. And also, it's not really secure uh, for for crypto and everything in Argentina. Uh, so it's, it's it's good in some way, but in others not 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 much. As as the price of crypto inevitably goes up, whatever the next bull run, 
do you think you'll it will start to you'll start to see some some positive change actually in like Argentina like it affecting you know the people positively uh, for the next bull run like is is are enough people using crypto to the point where it would start to as crypto goes up it would have an effect on their on their local economy and maybe start to to naturally uh, change Argentina for the better, as opposed to like El Salvador, right? Which is the hope that they're trying to do it through mandate. But could we actually mm-hmm. see it, you know, on its own start to? Uh, I believe it's already happening. Uh, you, if you go to Argentina and you talk with people below some age, uh, many of them are going. You're going to see support for crypto a lot. Um, those people having the cards, the, these cards, uh, that crypto cards, is really popular. And um, many um, people that's working from abroad, these not real big companies, some designers, uh, developers, something like that, and they all all manage their money with crypto because they receive from abroad and they need to receive. For example, if there, if sometimes they have a bank account in USA or in Uruguay in some country to receive the money there because the company that pays them. Uh, doesn't want to give them crypto. So they have a account abroad to receive that, but, but when they spend in Argentina, they need to move the money to Argentina and they use crypto because of that. Because there are some other things. They can't use, you, if you go to Argentina, you can't use a credit card or debit card from abroad. If you use, a, for example, you have a bank account US, in USA uh, and you say, okay, I will live in Argentina and it doesn't matter because I have the bank account in USA, I have the debit card from USA, I go into Spain in Argentina with debit card, okay, easy stuff, I don't need a bank account in Argentina. No, it, it doesn't work like that. If you have a, a credit card in, for, or debit card from USA in Argentina, when they convert, the, the Central Bank of Argentina does the conversion to Visa or MasterCard uh, of the rate of your dollars in USA to the pesos in Argentina, they're going to give you the the government fixed rate, so we are going. You're going to lose a lot of money. You have a guy who have a fifty percent complication. So you can do normally use debit cards from abroad in Argentina. In fact, this now that the pandemic is over and everything, it's a very big issue in Argentina when the tourists came because the tourists in Argentina that can spend in Argentina. They had to go go with bills everywhere because if you go with a, with a debit card from abroad in Argentina, you're losing money. So it's a very big issue for tourist uh, industry there, and and one and that's another case for for, for crypto. Yeah, there are, lot, there are a lot of these small things that has Argentina. That's it's crazy. When is when is the conference? The what? conference is in November. Uh, I believe it was 10, 11, 12, for those days. So you are you gonna go? You'll you'll be there, right? Yes, uh, I, I'll be there. Yeah, I go to Argentina for that. What, what is the scene like? I mean, it's it's pretty big, right? We're t- there's like thousands of people, right? Yes, it's it's uh, it's the most important and biggest conference in Latin America uh, it, it, since 2013. It was the first, and uh, we do, we did it in it was in Buenos Aires, in Uruguay, in Chile, in Brazil, in Mexico, in Colombia. And in last year in El Salvador. So we have been in many countries. We try to, to go for Latin America. Uh, uh, and, and yes, we have speakers, uh, high quality speakers. You can go to labitconf.com and you see there. Uh, and well, it's going to, I'm going to be there. And many people are going to be there and, and hope to, it's going well. But yes. This year is in Argentina? Yeah. In Argentina, yes. We are coming back to Argentina because the first one was in Argentina in 2013 and now it's going to be 10 years of conference. Oh, okay. So we're going back to Argentina for, for that. It's going to be the biggest one in Argentina and we'll see how it goes. I believe it's going, to, it's going well, great. But it's always going great. I, I see, because I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the, the stuff, what happened, you know, it's, it's such crazy stuff, but everything in the end, everything seems to happen perfect but well, no, it's not not always perfect okay you yeah. see it's, but the people doesn't see the things i'm very perfectionist and that's uh that's make me sad a bit sometimes so no we could do that better and never, i and i lost a lot of time in doing the things best but uh, it's it's always going the conference is always uh, most of the people that come to a one edition of the conference always came to the others no matter where it, it is the conference that's you guys, you guys know how to party. You guys know how to party. 
we have a community that goes each year to the conference, no matter in which country it is. It's not that the conference, okay, this time is in Argentina, we're going to have Argentinian people see it. Okay, some part of the public is going to be Argentina because in Argentina, but we have a lot of community that is the BitConf community that goes no, no matter where it is, because we try to make the, the events uh, open to for people from abroad. We always do some kind of local stuff from people that doesn't live in that country and to show that country to the people that's coming. Oh, so very- we try to do, to do that. You know, and for the speakers and everything, they see, the, sometimes the speakers see that as, as a mix. Like, okay, I go to a conference, but I also doing tourists in that country because these people are going to show me that places locally and everything. So some speaker love that, and it's oh, yeah. a way for us to have the speakers to be there. Yeah, we're hoping to turn Monerotopia into something like that. <laughs> I mean, we only did our first one, but yeah, I mean, we're we're hoping that you know we we have a a cult following that will follow us to different locations around the world. Um, do you think you think a Monerotopia alongside a lot of Bitcoin? Conf would, would work because that's what we did. We did our first one alongside the Bitcoin conference in Miami. So we got okay. a lot of Bitcoiners that were Monero curious. So we got them to, to kind of, you know, come over, check it out. Do you think there'd be the same vibe? Are there, are there, you think there's a Monero curious crew among the, the attendees of, of La Bitcoin? Uh, I don't see much of the community in, in Argentina uh, interested in Monero, to tell you the truth. I, I know some some cases, but not uh, not community. There's I don't know that there is a community, a Argentinian Monero community. Uh, I believe the more open and friendly people to them to Monero in Argentina are, in fact, the hardcore Bitcoiners. I know many Bitcoiners that like Monero, uh, and I see like 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 a mix there. Uh, most people interested in Monero in Argentina, I believe, are also Bitcoiners and are are, the, are more the the anti-establishment type of guy and the technology guy. Uh, I, and I believe that is already happening in Bitcoin in, in Argentina. But in Argentina, we have the community, a big community of Bitcoin and a big community of, of Ethereum. That's the main, main two that you have really community that, that, that they are doing events in their, in their yeah. way. Exactly. Monero, we got to get Monero going down there, man. We're, we're going to invade. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we have, you know, Monero Uju, right? You know, the, the wallet, the Android yeah. wallet. So, uh, I, I know you, I, I'm, a, I'm an iPhone right? guy, so I don't have it. But I believe they're going to do a, an iPhone version. They're, they're working on that. Yeah, yeah. And those guys are, at least some of them are, are from Argentina. Yeah, I, just, I, I know Andres. So, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good guys. Um, how'd you, so how'd you make the conference so successful from, I mean, obviously, obviously, because Bitcoin, it was the first one, everybody, but like, so professional. I mean, did you guys, is, is these are skills you had from the, from naturally, or did you, uh, bring in uh, experts early on? No, the first years we were doing everything by our, ourselves, uh, 2013, 14, 15, and I believe 16. In 2017, we started with having a production team and that, that know, knows about this stuff and they do conference for, for other people and everything. And, and we always contract some production to, to do it. Uh, in the early days, no, we do it by ourselves. Uh, and we have a guy, uh, and the director of the conference, Rodolfo Andragnes, uh, really likes the, the to work in that, in the, in the band, more in uh, and. And I believe he he learned a lot of doing events. Uh, and he's the main guy of the conference. Uh, he's uh, we, in the first edition we were free doing the conference, and and now I believe from the three initial guys, uh, it's only one doing everything with a team. And Diego and I, 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 I we are there for very small things. We, we were the only the other two that started the, the process. But the, the event, I believe, the people really loved it, and. In fact, our treasury is always in Bitcoin. That's always helped a lot the conference uh, with with the sponsor. We receive money when we receive money from the sponsors. We have uh, everything in Bitcoin always. In, in fact, in the if they pay in, in fiat, that in some edition was possible, in some not. But now the event is so big that you have companies that want to pay in fiat. Mm-hmm. Uh, some we have sponsors that are not crypto companies, so. They, they, if the company is not a crypto company, it's not going to pay you Bitcoin. So now we, we are open to fiat 
uh, <laughs> sponsorships. Uh, and we have to have a bank account, crazy, sorry. But <laughs> we don't manage that. And, but everything is later converted uh, to Bitcoin. At the end of the conference, okay, you receive fiat money, okay, we can try to use that money for the conference itself. But if you have, we have a surplus, all the money is always converted back to Bitcoin. That sometimes worked really well. That sometimes worked bad. For example, last edition worked bad because it was only in El Salvador last year. The Bitcoin price was much higher. And the conference received everything in Bitcoin. In that year in El Salvador, for last year, we didn't receive any fiat money. We decided, okay, this year we're going to be totally Bitcoin only. We only receive a sponsorship in Bitcoin. The, the tickets are only selling Bitcoin. And last year was a special case where we were really Bitcoin only. Uh, but well, of course, of course, the money, uh, the price of Bitcoin is going to went down. So the, the, the edition economically, it was not great, but the, the event was totally a success. But in the long run of, of, the, of the, the, the conference, uh, holding the Bitcoin will always work fine. Oh, yeah. So we're, we're happy doing that because, okay, 2013, 14, 15, those years, it was always in Bitcoin. So, and the, 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 we have some support. Okay, so if things go bad, we can manage to, have, to hold a year, two years. It doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't go into break us to do that. So, we're still holding, having the treasury in Bitcoin. And I love to do that because having transactions in fiat with, for an event is really crazy. Uh, it's real. It's a pain in the ass, to, to tell you the truth. Uh, when we have sponsorships and everything in Bitcoin, it's so such easy. We have a multi sig wallet, okay? We, but the money is going there. You see it in real time and everything. And when you receive a sponsorship in, in fiat, in fact, this year uh, we are doing a, a big discount. I, I don't remember it was 20% or 15% if you pay in Bitcoin because the, the amount of work we need uh, when you you pay in fiat, it's, it's crazy to talk with the bank. No, the wire didn't arrive, but the company site is sent, but it's not there. What happened? When sometimes we have, in fact, we have a we have a foundation uh, created in Uruguay for managing the fiat part of the conference, okay, uh, and with a bank account and everything. But we selected the putting the the name of the the foundation is Bitcoin Iberoamerica, and and we have some wires from USA that were blocked because the foundation has had Bitcoin in its name. So they, they went, the wire was not getting there because the name of the receiver was has something related to Bitcoin. We managed to work that, that out with that company. Um, but, but well, it's, it's really a different world. It's, it's a different oh, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah. We're, we're, we're the same way. Monerotopia was all Monero, only uh, sponsors paid uh, all all in, in Monero. It's uh, so easy when it's there like that. Actually, one paid in, in, in another crypto, but then we converted it into Monero. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, and then all our tickets were sold in, in Monero. And then we, we tried to get our vendors and people like things. We tried to get people to accept Monero you know, for our expenses. Like we got our printer which was huge because we, we were printing it. We printed out like a lot of banners and stuff. We got him to agree to accept Monero. And so, yeah, I mean, it's we, just, we, we do the same. Yeah. We yeah, do the same. yeah. And obviously the bigger you are, the, the easier that is to do. Um, but yeah, it's an opportunity to, uh, you know, create that, that circular economy. And yeah, same thing with the, we do have a bank account. Uh, we have it mostly for our, cause we do a, this coffee business gratuitous, where we people can buy coffee, it comes mm -hmm. from a, a farm in Guatemala, and then you could send tips in Monero to the workers on the farm. We gave them their own okay. Monero right. wallets, but the uh, the farm doesn't allow us to pay Monero for the coffee, and it's not like we're we're not like buying thousands of tons of coffee. You know, we're a small operation. Would love to get there someday, and this farm is is tremendous. They're they're very very large farm. And it's like the orders are, you know, whatever, a couple of hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. And it's such a pain in the ass to, to get them the money from here. It's like you would think, you know, banks just don't like haven't really figured it out. It's like unbelievable. It's unbelievable. I, it's like the and imagine like that Sunita has to deal with. And it's like there's all the like 
we're like, can we please just send you Monero? I'm like, and then I'm just like sending a Monero, like just here, just download a while. Here's Monero. Just like, look, it's there. I'll send you more than the cost of the thing. <laughs> I just want to get you used to it. We don't have to deal with this. I'm like, it doesn't make any sense, man. And imagine that doing the conference in some part in Fiat in Argentina. That's even worse because if you have the foundation in Uruguay, but the Uruguay Foundation can pay the stuff in Argentina because of these capital controls. So we are going to, when we are needing to use crypto in itself, converting some fiat to crypto to pay things in Argentina and to pay things in Argentina. We have another society we, we have for another thing for years ago when we had another, a place called Spacio Bitcoin that was a co working space. And we have a society for, for, for there for that. And we are using that society. It's, it's crazy to manage fiat in South America and in Argentina with money from abroad is, is totally dependent on the ass even worse than your situation, I can believe me. So what, what, what another thing good from the conference is that uh, everything, the money received once is paid, is always spent in the next year conference or in something related to, uh, to Bitcoin. It's, it's a non-profit. So once we pay everything, salaries and people that work there and everything and the staff, uh, that don't all, not all additionals are positive in the in the, in the earnings, but we have a backup there. Um, all the money is, 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 is spending some other thing that for, for Bitcoin, for example, for many years we had the, the La Bitconeta. La Bitconeta was a van that traveled from Argentina to, to Colombia, more or less, to many countries doing meetups in each country's go, in Argentina, in Uruguay, in Chile, in Paraguay, in Bolivia. We travel the world doing meet us and Bitcoin, and we spend there the money of the conference, the earnings of the conference. For example, we're paying a Bitcoin core developer also. That's uh, we did, still didn't publicly that, but we're paying someone to to pay to work in Bitcoin core uh, oh, wow. with money from the conference. Very cool. uh, and, we, and we try to support things that uh, the, that are related to the conference and the uh, and the view we had in the conference. Very cool, man. Very cool. Respect. <laughs> uh, so, what is it that what are you focused on personally these days? What 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 project are you are you working on uh, these days? In fact, not much to tell you the truth. In my personal life, is I, I just have a baby, a daughter. Oh, congrats! Um, that's, that's a big project. <laughs> that's a very important project. Yeah, Thanks. It's, it's it's new in my life. This <laughs> it's the first time I, I'm a baby daddy. So oh. and we 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 move here into Lisbon. We have a baby, so I have a lot of personal things there, uh, and I try to to do my part in the conference. So, so the main thing I do in related to to Bitcoin now is is being the treasury of the conference and doing the payments and doing the, receiving the money from the, the fiat account and that part of the conference. That is not the more fun part. <laughs> I mean, it's the awful part, but someone has to do it, and I'm doing that. Because I, I, I'm very meticulous and perfectionist, so I, I believe in that part it's better for me to do the stuff <laughs> than not other friends that in the conference, but are more they do they want to do more the crazy stuff. And you know, I give me the thing, I will process everything. The, the, the Bitcoin addresses giving a Bitcoin address different to each sponsor and uh, manage it all in that. So I do it more mainly that. Uh, and we will see next year. Possibility. Yeah, you gotta yeah, yeah, you don't wanna you don't wanna screw that up. Charge, yeah, charge, no. <laughs> charge all the money. Has, has your perception on things changed at all since being since being a new father? Has there been like a, a noticeable change in, in your in your worldview? Have you like adjusted adjusted your, maybe your risk profile in life? Have, has there been an effect? Uh, no, I believe not. Not much. Do you do? Oh, my view in personal issues, maybe yes, but in the in this risk things. I believe I'm. I try to have some backups on everything and try to manage my life more or less conservatively uh, in this kind of stuff. For example, if I had to pay, of course, I hold Bitcoin and, and you have to have, spend something next year. Uh, sometimes I sell the Bitcoin before needing to spend so I can manage the money. Okay, and to then next year we have to pay something that is big, for example. Okay, 
uh, I can depend on the on the Bitcoin price for doing that because if the Bitcoin price goes low too low, I can do that next year. So I try to manage that. And for example, okay, I will say now today uh, something. I okay, now I have the fiat. I won't have it for next year. Uh, I see coding a lot, of course, but that kind of stuff I try to do it conservatively. Maybe, of course, having a daughter makes me. But I was thinking about doing this from some years, so I try to manage that. Uh, but yes, having is 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 wonderful. I believe uh, <laughs> I, I'm forty three, uh, and a little, a little bit late, maybe. Um, and I, I'm. I used to believe that maybe I wouldn't have a child or sons and everything, but now that I have it, I say how, how I could have believed in that. Yeah, yeah, beautiful, man. It's, it's great. Yes. What, what do you? I I, I have a. An eight-year-old. What do you think? You think you think our kids are going to be living in a in a more liberated world when they grow up? You think things are going to be better, worse? So, obviously, you know, we're we're trying to make them better. Uh, I believe the world is going to be. Uh, I'm an optimist. I'm not optimist in governments, but the worldview I have is going to get better. I believe that we have we have the tools to for that, uh, and I believe it's going to be a better world. Yes. Yeah. Like we're already doing this because we sometimes we don't notice but but with the stuff we are doing we are putting stops at blocks to the government to do if we didn't have bitcoin and crypto and everything i believe the some things that are happening in the world will be different these days um so i believe we, we are better yeah and we still we are seeing the effects of that and sometimes we don't notice it for example, a lot of the community in Argentina from going abroad and everything is done in crypto. My life is, even if, for example, even if I, if I didn't hold any crypto, I'm still doing managing crypto for doing transfer in the world. I have a bank account in different countries and sometimes I need to manage money and I use crypto for that. So to jump from country to country, okay, I, I need some country in Europe, okay. Just send money to Kraken, some Bitcoin to Kraken, you're selling Kraken, okay, now I have money in Europe. And I, I do it. So those kind of stuff wouldn't be possible without crypto. Even if not, it's not a full economy in crypto and everything, it seems that I'm helping myself moving in the world and I'm moving the money with me, okay? We had we the money in crypto, and okay, then, then in the land, in last run, in the last part of the, the process, you convert to fiat to spend, okay. It's not so bad. Okay, it would, could be better, like we, we talked before. Yes, it could be better. We can we can have all the process, but maybe you can have more, the 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 holding part by yourself, and that that's a really important part because in, you have situation where you can hold the money with without crypto and you lose it in banks, you lose it in publications. You can send, go to a, some parts of the world are, they are using gold for going to. And they're confiscating in the customs and everything. It's, it's, so you, even if we are, we are achieving that, having the money in crypto and then spending in fiat is is still a success, I believe. Yeah. So like, so we get in there. Definitely, man. And there's, there's only like we said, we've been saying over and over again. You know, uh, it's it's ripe for adoption right now, especially in places like Argentina. And uh, you know, it's just going to continue to grow and grow. You just need more people like like you, you know, that are that are die hard, that are actually, you know, in it for the right reasons, trying to build a, you know, uh, you know, an economy outside of the fiat world. But it's yeah, it, we're, we're we're going to get there, I believe. No, not sure if, they, if in the perfect way I would love, but we are better than before. Agree, agree. All right, Matt. Thank you so much. This is a, a great conversation. I'm so glad I got to meet you. Uh, I didn't, like I said, I didn't really, I didn't really know much about you before going into this. And, the same happened to me. In fact, I'm going to see past past uh, podcasts of you to see all all, all in Bailey, people invited and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, There's been some good ones. There's been some good okay, ones. Okay, I'm going to check everything and, and see in front. With some BTC maxis, some old school BTC meds. There's a uh, okay. I, I didn't want to really get into the Bitcoin Monero thing because it's that conversation's been had on this show so many so many times, you know. But uh, thanks for sharing your opinions on that. And maybe uh, maybe we'll come down to the to the conference as like uh, media or something. You maybe we'll you think we'd get some good interviews down there? Yes, I believe so. Let's talk later, and uh, oh. yes, we can manage that. Of course. All right, man, Franco. Thank you so much. 
Thanks for inviting me. It was All a right. pleasure. Cheers. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to our show on YouTube, Odyssey, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Go to MoneroTalk.live to subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.